Hello everyone, I'm Sonic Seniraku, and welcome to my advanced tech slash combat tips and tricks series for Neo the Wardens with you. In this video, we're going to be discussing how understanding the behavior and interactivity of your pins and pairing that knowledge with other tech we've discussed so far, like momentum cancelling, buffer activation, and reversals, can vastly improve the pace and fluidity with which combat plays out. If anyone were to ask me what defines the skill ceiling of Neo, I would tell them that combat mastery is established by five factors. Pin management, understanding pin synergy, expert use of immobilizing status effects to extend combos, intelligent groove mashup utilization slash mashup looping, and positioning. Sure, there are other high-level skills that occupy the subcategories of Neo's combat ceiling, like momentum canceling, inertia manipulation, and swift strike side switching to name a few, but the aforementioned five factors are the ones I deem as evidence that a Neo player truly possesses an understanding of how far the rabbit hole goes with its combat. It's no coincidence then that these five factors play a pivotal role in informing a player's understanding of pin behavior and their ability to utilize their advantageous interactions to excel at combat. Let's take a look at a few pins and explore the plethora of optimal interactions they can provide, giving you understand their particular quirks and how that connects to the broader picture of the five skill factors. Let's start with one of my favorites, Kony x Kony. This pin comes with the psych Gravity Flux, an ability that causes a shift in gravity whenever the enemy is hit with the pin's several spinning saw-like discs. Gravity shifts in two ways, either causing a downwards force that slams enemies into the ground, or an upwards force that lifts them up. Seeing as attacks in this game will track whatever the player is locked onto, you could influence the direction of the blades via lock-on switching, i.e. you can hit multiple enemies of your choosing by guiding the blades at them once you've released the attack, an insanely helpful quirk for crowd controlling, especially since each enemy who are hit by the disc will experience a gravity flux either up or down. Oh, but there's more. Because all patrol round sykes behave like boomerangs, the positioning of the character who launched the attack also becomes imperative in how it's guided across the field. A player can intentionally position their character at certain distances to guarantee more enemies are hit by the blades as you lock on switch. Mastery of positioning with any kind of patrol round psych in general can allow you to do extremely cool combos with other psychs when fighting multiple enemies, as seen here. But going back to Kony x Kony, its gravity flux can activate on a single target a max of 4 times. 4 is extremely rare, at least from my observations. By the way, I love some of the cool ways you can use other pins to knock enemies into the disc to trigger a gravity flux, like pow driving an enemy into a disc below them, or sending them flying into one. There's a bit of RNG that goes into determining the vector of the fluxes, in addition to whether or not you get all four of them, so that should at least be kept in mind when using it. Most of the time, Kony x Kony will inflict two fluxes on an enemy, so the player is never truly at a deficit when using the attack. But here's where it gets better. Each flux provides the player a drop the beat prompt, and since a single attack from Kony x Kony can potentially flux 4 times, the player can drop the beat on each flux and earn a sizable pool of groove points in just one use. Remember, you actually need to drop the beat when a flux provides it before the subsequent flux makes another beat drop prompt appear. Otherwise, you'll only see a single beat drop prompt despite gravity having fluctuated multiple times. Given that Kony x Kony can be fully charged 3 times per pin meter, you're looking at a pin that can potentially provide 12 beat drop opportunities before being depleted. 16 if you equip the turbocharged thread. Kony x Kony is the only pin in this game that can provide that many beat drop opportunities in a single meter use, making it a special pin indeed. One of the ways a player can take advantage of Kony x Kony's multiple beat drop characteristics is by timing the release of the discs in the midst of releasing another pin's attack. One effective pin combination is to release the gravity discs while also activating Sister Subwoofer. If done right, the discs will make contact first, activating a drop the beat prompt to which Sister Subwoofer will confirm into with its kick. As the enemy flies back into a wall and activates another drop the beat prompt upon slamming into it, the rest of the discs will extend outwards like a chain whip in an attempt to chase the enemy down and score another flux. Again, if timed right, the discs will hit the enemy as soon as they splat against the wall, scoring the sweet spot of the drop the beat prompt left by Sister Subwoofer, while now activating a new prompt due to the gravity flux, which can then be confirmed into with another pin's attack. This interaction lasts a little over 4 seconds, but in that time frame, the player has already accrued over 100% groove and can now unleash a mashup. One of my personal favorite Kony x Kony combinations is pairing the upward fluxes of the attack with well-timed sword melee slashes to create what I like to call the Kony x Kony stepladder combo. By timing the slashes to the upward momentum of gravity flux, not only does it look cool, but each sword slash will confirm the multiple beat drop the fluxes provide on the way to the top. I can take the stepladder combo to advance heights by using momentum cancelling strats to have airborne control over enemies and drift them through the air. Take a look at this clip as we explore what I just described.
As you see here, a momentum cancel sister subwoofer's kick with Shishio's pseudo finisher to tack on damage, preventing the Grizzly from flying away from Shoka too fast, as I want to maintain his aerial control and continue to drift the Grizzly across the stage instead of sending it flying away immediately. Again, planning such as this exemplifies why factors like positioning and pin knowledge defines the skill ceiling for Neo's gameplay. As I launch another sister subwoofer's kick towards the Grizzly, I time Konyx Kony in a way that it would cancel the kick's momentum, preventing the Grizzly from slamming into the wall so that I can do another step ladder combo without any execution issues. Thankfully, the RNG was in my favor in such a way that I continuously got fluxes with upward vectors. I had to do this combo a few times to get these conditions, but the end result was pretty worth it, I thought. Let's look at another Konyx Kony step ladder combo. This one in particular is a reverse variant, wherein I use Sister Supple for his angular trajectory to reverse the position of the Grizzly by timing the kick in such a way that the angle would force the Grizzly in the opposite direction. As you can see, understanding how Sister Subwoofer works allows me to pull this off. Speaking of which, let's take a minute to talk about that pin. Sister Subwoofer is a variant of the Psych Massive Hit, with the unique capacity to charge up faster than other Massive Hit Psychs, and possesses the insanely great ability Groove Boost 2, which nets a player 50% more Groove Points with any kind of beat drop combo involving this attack. Sister Subwoofer also has a respectable reboot speed of 10 seconds, meaning it can be used quite a bit in the span of battle. Being a massive hit psych, Subwoofer can send enemies flying and even have them ricocheting off of each other, inflicting 50% of the damage of a fully connected kick. This can lead to intuitive ricocheting strats, once again rewarding awareness of positioning and pin knowledge. Now as for how reverse knockback works with massive hitman type like Subwoofer, this is just a product of what happens when the attack hits the enemy at a weird angle, resulting in the enemy's hurtbox coming in contact with the attack's hitbox from behind, hence why they end up flying backwards instead. Other massive hitpins of a similar type to Subwoofer can do this as well. But a subwoofer tends to do this reversal launch the best because it goes off faster and has a better angular trajectory compared to the others. While the developers might have not intended for these massive hit pins to be used in this way, the fact that this maneuver can be pulled off with consistency, so as long as you get the positioning right, adds an extra layer of versatility to the use of these sites. Let's go over one more pin, being that of Shishio, and describe what makes it such a great shockwave sight. For one, it's slightly shorter than usual combo string compared to other shockwave pins, means that it can get to its finisher faster, giving your offensive pressure that extra bit of immediacy. Other notable details include Shishio's finisher being able to generate a drop the beat prompt on any type of enemy, no matter what the size. Other sword type pins that require the enemy to be sent flying or launched, reveal their limits when going up against bigger enemy types that just aren't affected by those staggering properties. Shishu not having this problem means you can comfortably activate drop the beat prompts and rack up groove in any kind of situation. Shishu's pseudo finisher being as quick as it is also makes it a great candidate for momentum casting other finishers if you want to get stylish and strategical. Shishu's helm splitter finisher has quite a bit of homing range as well when switching from one target to another, more range than most finishers as a matter of fact, making it perfect for hitting reversals from far distances or landing the finisher on enemies that have been knocked back and distant by another pin's attack. Add in the fact that its attack stat is pretty up there, along with having great synergy with other pins and groove mashups, and you've got an S tier pin with S tier combat utility. In regards to pin synergy, one tactic I especially like imploring in conjunction with Shishu's pseudo finisher is firing off subwoofer right before the horizontal slash comes out when that enemy hits against the wall. Since subwoofer's beat drop prompt has a sweet spot right at the beginning of the circle, the incoming pseudo finisher from Shishio will confirm into it and accrue a large sum of groove. I'll then complete the Shishio finisher to activate a drop the beat prompt immediately after and confirm into either another attack from Subwoofer or a different pin entirely and rack up tons more groove. It's a strategy that works wonders for inundating the opposition with one mashup attack after the other. Understanding the ins and outs of your pin interactions is consequential to the level of speed in which you play Neo. The game initially teaches the player how to take a careful, stepwise approach to formulating combos, encouraging them to wait for an attack to complete its finisher before transitioning into another. Use a sword pin to attack, then pelt the enemy with your projectiles while charging a launcher. Release the launcher, then slam the opponent down with a power driver. Surround the enemy in a sea of fire, then repeat the process or mix it up a little. And while some may do that, but just match your way through battle, once you find the rhythm to your group of pins and comprehend their nuances, there will be no need to wait for a pin's finisher before unleashing the other to make effective combos. You'll be able to synchronize attacks with other incoming ones, or combine the attack strings of multiple pins to create elaborate combinations that will net you a bunch of grooves much faster than if you took a slowed down, measured approach. Let's take a look at a clip where I go from 0 to 300 in literally 12 seconds by utilizing the information I've shared about Kony x Kony, Sinta Subwoofer, and Shishio. I want you guys to take note of how I never slowed down, yet I'm not just blindly attacking either. 
Notice how I incorporate the strats I spoke of, and how helpful they were in allowing me to achieve 300% in such a short time. This is the beauty of really understanding your pin interactions. The skill to time your combinations in such a fashion that you can maintain extremely fast offensive pressure while efficiently skimming for lightning fast groove point conversion combos in order to seamlessly transition into mashup limit breaks. This right here is the essence of Neo's combat loop and why understanding the illustrious harmony with which its systems commune yields an unprecedented amount of reward to the player. Executing a combo with pristine expertise, unleashing a powerful groove mashup, then timing your attack during the mashup to immediately loop into another mashup and succeeding that with another well-structured combo are inextricably tied to understanding your pins, its traits, and their interactions. Pair that with a measured management of pin meter, i.e. the know-how to stop using a pin midway so you can extend its use, and you're playing the game in a whole new stratosphere. Always remember that most pins in Neo, depending on their activation type, only need a pixel of pin meter to be able to pull off a whole combo string, meaning that choosing to stop a combo midway then restarting it can prolong its use and net you more damage per meter than if you had just constantly spammed the attack. Understanding this dramatically improves one's ability to keep pin meter available for constant, uninterrupted offense. Now I'd like to cap this video off by presenting examples of how knowledge of pin interaction can be used to approach combat in a relentlessly aggressive and speedy manner as a way to emphasize what the skill ceiling of Neo looks like. While watching, take note of how there's never a single moment as fast as I unleash attacks, that I spend up all my pin meter and have to wait for one to reboot just so I can continue my offense.
I hope you all were able to see through that scissor reel of noise battles, the importance of pin management and mashup utilization, coupled with an in-depth understanding of pin interactions, pin synergy, and positioning when playing Neo at a blisteringly fast, yet methodical pace. Now I wasn't able to discuss all the interactions I showed off in that scissor reel, but there's so many pins in this game that can be used in advanced ways, that if I try to talk about all of them, we'd be here all day. That being said, I want to leave you guys off with this thought. Try to think less of your pins as just attacks, and more so as weapons, action skills, and special attacks that require comprehension, testing, and practice to squeeze out its maximum potential. You're not just using pins, you're wielding them. When you start to think of your combat tools in such a fashion, it motivates you, or at least it motivated me, to discern their nuances and utilize every single aspect of their characteristics in battle. And that's all I've got for today. Join me next time as we explore how to use Swift Strike, specifically from the pin Wolf, to execute side switching combos and juggles. That's right, you can even side switch in Neo, a staple of high level hack and slash action games. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to stay locked in for more Neo content, as well as other video game related uploads in the near future. Thank you all for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.